Hello everyone and thank you for joining us for our webinar today, Understanding Your Heart Health with the Heart Foundation and My Health Record. My name is Cathy Rainbird and I'm one of the managers in the education team here at the Australian Digital Health Agency. And joining me to present this webinar today, I'm really pleased to introduce Rebecca Thackeray from the Heart Foundation. Thanks for joining us, Rebecca and my colleague Tunda Kator, who's going to talk about how you can use My Health Record to support better heart health. Heart health. <laughs> um, so we're really pleased to be presenting this session uh, in collaboration with the Heart Foundation during Heart Week, so particularly timely to be doing this. But before we kick off, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we're having this session. I'm speaking to you today from Manang Pibilum country, which is part of the Noongar Nation, and I'd like to extend my respect to them and their elders, as well as all the different lands across which we're meeting today. Uh, we pay our respects to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, their cultures and their elders past, present and emerging. Rebecca from the Heart Foundation will be talking around understanding your heart health and what you can do now to improve your heart health. She'll also point out a number of resources and specific support programs for people who want to improve their heart health. Then uh, Tunde from the agency will talk about My Health Record and heart health information go through some screenshots and show you how you can find your pathology test results in My Health Record and how you can find your medicines information and Medicare information and how you can also add some medicines information into your own record if you want to make sure that's available. She'll also point out some further resources and support and we'll then have time for questions and answers. So if you do think of a question while we're going through the presentation, as I said, please feel free to type them into the Q&A box in the GoToWebinar control panel. So now I'd like to hand over to Rebecca, who's going to take us through the first part of the presentation. Thanks, Rebecca. Thanks so much, Cathy. And thank you to the Australian Digital Health Agency for hosting this webinar in partnership with the Heart Foundation. Um, so I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the many varied lands on which we gather today. Mine being the Gadigal people from the Eora Aura Nation here in Sydney and pay my respects to their cultures, their elders, past, present and emerging. So why is heart health important? The burden of cardiovascular disease remains high. It causes one in four of all deaths in Australia and accounts for more than 1,600 hospitalisations per day. Two thirds of Australian adults are living with at least three risk factors for cardiovascular disease or heart disease, such as elevated blood pressure, um, elevated cholesterol and diabetes. It is estimated that 2.5 million Australians are at high risk of having a heart attack or stroke within the next five years. So risk factors, there are a number of risk factors that combine to increase your chances of having a heart attack or stroke. And it is not simply about having one risk factor for heart disease, it's about how they combine to increase your risk so some of the risk factors are included, um, increased blood pressure, um, an unhealthy diet, diabetes, high cholesterol, a family history, depression, age, smoking, uh, a high BMI or increased weight um, and your gender. So risk factors for heart disease that you can't change. So these are some of the risk factors that you can't change. So age, so as you get older, your risk of heart disease increases. Your gender, um, typically men are at high risk of heart disease uh, relative to women of the same age. Uh, women's risk does, however, grow after menopause. Um, ethnicity, so people of, of some such origin, such as Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander people, or people from the Indian subcontinent have a higher risk of cardiovascular disease. 
And lastly, family history. If you have a family history of heart disease, you may have an increased risk of having a heart attack or stroke. Risk factors for heart disease that you can change. So these are some of the things that you can do now. You can quit smoking. So smoking makes you four times more likely to die of a heart attack. Um, decrease um, bad cholesterol. So bad cholesterol can stick to the walls of your arteries and this causes blockages and increases your risk of a heart attack or stroke. Um, blood pressure that's high over a long time is one of the main risk factors for heart attacks and strokes. Having diabetes increases your risk of developing heart attack or stroke. Being physically inactive is one of the risk factors of a heart disease and eating an un unhealthy diet in also increases your risk of heart disease. We'll go through some of the, um, what you can do now to improve your heart health um, a little bit later in the slides. So what is a heart health check? So subsidized by Medicare, this is a 20 minute check um, this 20 minute checkup is to learn your risk of having a heart attack or stroke within the next five years and more importantly, help you to discuss the next steps you can take to lower this risk. If you're 45 and over or 30 years and over above for Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander peoples with no current history of heart disease, you can book in for a heart health check with your GP today. Your GP will check your cholesterol, your blood pressure, your blood sugar levels for diabetes, your medical history, your lifestyle and family history. Your GP will also calculate your chances of developing heart disease using a validated calculator. And your GP will also work with you to set up a plan to help reduce your risk of heart disease. This could include things like lifestyle advice, blood pressure monitoring and cholesterol lowering medications, or even a referral to your dietitian. So being aware of your personal risk of heart disease is particularly important in Australia, as we know that every 30 minutes, one Australian loses their life to heart disease. It takes less than 30 minutes to know your risk. And this Heart Week, um, the beginning of May from the 1st to the 7th, uh, we're encouraging all Australians to follow three simple steps to keep their heart healthy. So these simple steps, including measure your blood pressure, Calculate your heart age using the heart age calculator accessible by the Heart Foundation website and book in with your GP for a heart health check. So we're just going to play a short uh, video for you now on Kylie's story. I'm Kylie. I had a heart attack six weeks after my 48th birthday. It was um, Tuesday, 7th of February, 2017. I'd bought tickets for my husband to see Guns N' Roses concert for his 40th birthday. We got to the concert, we bought the obligatory t-shirt, and then we just waited in the line. I just started to get this immense pressure on my chest, and it just got worse. And I remember saying to my husband, something's not right. I had immense pain in my arms and I felt sick and clammy and hot and the pressure on my chest was like nothing I can explain. And then within a matter of minutes, everything just went downhill. I remember completely blacking out and the pain and the pins and needles, it was everywhere, it was consuming. The next minute I was in an emergency ambulance and on my way to the hospital. The doctor said, I can't believe I'm about to tell you this. He said, you've just had a massive heart attack. We're taking you straight to ICU. It was a big shock, a very big shock, and yeah, things changed a lot that day. I had a 95% blockage. I think it's one in 10 that survived that type of heart attack, and just luckily I was where I was. Had it been when the concert had started and we were right up the front, I don't know whether I would have got out in time. My daughter was about to turn 18. Someone said to me, like, oh, it's, you're so lucky you didn't miss it. And I said, it's, it's not that I would have missed it. It's them not having me there is probably the biggest thing. So here I am today, four years later, very much a survivor. When I walked out of hospital, I was handed two books, both put out by the Heart Foundation, as well as tools that I needed to be able to tell myself I'm going to be okay. 
Afterwards, I found out um, that my biological father had had two heart attacks in his 40s. So for me, it was just history. That's all it was. I was well, I wasn't overweight, I wasn't a smoker, I was not your traditional heart attack. For me, I had no signs, and I can honestly sit here and say it was such a surprise. I recommend everyone go and get a heart health check, particularly from when you're 45. Just make it part of your regular annual routine. You know, it's just one small thing you can do that, you know, maybe save your life. So that little video just highlights the importance of um, booking in, um, knowing your risk factors, booking in to have a heart health check with your GP and looking after yourself. So next slide please. So some of the things that you can do now to improve your heart health. Um, number one is enjoy a heart healthy diet. This includes plenty of vegetables, fruits and whole grains, a variety of healthy protein sources, especially fish and seafood, uh, legumes such as beans and lentils and nuts and seeds. Smaller amounts of eggs and lean poultry can also be included in a heart healthy diet. And if choosing red meat, make sure the meat is lean and limit to one to three times per week. Unflavoured milk, yogurt, cheese and people with high blood pressure should choose reduced fat varieties. Healthy fat choices with nuts, seeds, avocado oils and, um, oil and olive oils for cooking. Herbs and spices for flavour in foods instead of adding salt. Number two, maintain a healthy weight. It is important to maintain a, health, maintain a healthy body weight because it can help lower your blood pressure and cholesterol and lower your risk of having a heart problem. The Heart Foundation recommends you aim for a waist measurement of less than 80 centimetres in circumference for females or 94 centimetres for males. If you lose weight, you can speak with your GP um, on how to do it in a really healthy way. Physical activity. So start with small realistic goals and work your way up to the recommended 30 to 60 minutes of moderate intensity physical activity. This can include things such as brisk walking on most days of the week. The most important goal is to find a way to move your body every single day or be active regularly. Try a range of fun activities and pick the one that suits you the best. So smoking and alcohol. If you're a smoker, the best thing that you can do for your heart is to quit smoking. For support to quit smoking, you can talk with your GP or call the quit line. Drink no more than 10 standard drinks per week and no more than four standard drinks in any one day. And being aware of your own personal risk of heart disease is particularly important in Australia, as we know that every 30 minutes, one Australian loses their life. So our new resources that have been developed just for you. So high blood pressure is the leading risk factor for heart disease. The only way to find out if you have a high blood pressure is to have it checked regularly. Even if you're feeling well and healthy, everyone aged 18 and over should still have their blood pressure measured at least once every two years. Blood pressure can be measured at home using a validated machine at a pharmacy via a CSU health station or by a doctor or nurse during your next doctor's appointment. And these um, consumer resources are all accessible by the HeartWeek webpage at theheartfoundation.org.au. So the Heart Foundation website has a range of useful resources, tips and tricks to help you understand your heart and risks. And these are easy to understand and will help you manage and reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease. This is just one of the examples that we have available within our website and we'll just play that now quickly for you. Do you know high blood pressure is one of the leading causes of heart disease and stroke in Australia? High blood pressure puts a strain on your heart and blood vessels. Over time, this raises your chance of having a heart attack or stroke. Your blood pressure is measured as two numbers. The top number is your systolic blood pressure, the amount of pressure in your arteries when your heart muscle contracts to push blood around your body. The bottom number is your diastolic blood pressure, when your heart muscle is relaxed between beats. 
your blood pressure goes up and down naturally throughout the day, depending on what you are doing. Your doctor will tell you what your ideal blood pressure should be based on your medical history. A healthy reading for most people is around 120 over 80. High blood pressure is often diagnosed when the reading is persistently higher than 140 over 90. It's also called hypertension. There's no one specific cause for high blood pressure, but there are a number of things like your family history and lifestyle that can increase your chances of developing it. High blood pressure isn't usually something you can feel. The only way to know if your blood pressure is healthy is to have it checked regularly, even if you're feeling healthy and well. A doctor, nurse or pharmacist can check your blood pressure or you can do it at home with a validated machine. If you're 18 or over, get your blood pressure checked at least every two years. If you're 45 and older, or 30 and older for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, see your doctor to have your blood pressure measured as part of a heart health check. If you do have high blood pressure, you can help manage it with some simple changes to your lifestyle, such as following a heart healthy eating pattern, eating less salt, and being more active. Your doctor might also recommend some medications to keep it under control. Don't let high blood pressure sneak up on you. Get it checked and take control of your heart health today. So the heart age calculator can also help you understand your risk of heart attack or stroke. It identifies your heart age compared to your actual age. The calculator is intended for people aged 35 to 75 years or above 30 years for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Your risk of heart attack or stroke is higher if your heart age is greater than your actual age. It looks at common risk factors to determine your heart age as it relates to your actual age and it helps motivate the user or it helps to motivate yourself, take action and book in to see a GP for a heart health check. The National Heart Foundation has a range of other tools and resources and some of our most utilised resources um, are here to help you lead a heart healthier lifestyle. These include the personalised walking plans and the heart healthy meal plans. The personalised and the protect, then the 10 steps to protect your heart. The National Heart Foundation delivers a four week electronic mail journey. So this is an email journey with links to different themed nutrition resources each week, in addition to recipes and shopping lists for your heart healthy meal plans. Personalised walking plans are free, easy to follow and are a six week physical and offer a six week physical activity. It's tailored to different abilities and they're designed to keep to get people moving 30 minutes or more on most days each week. These resources are free and accessible through our Heart Foundation website. In collaboration with the Australian Digital Health Agency, the Heart Foundation has recently developed um, this resource on the early availability of INR results. The aim is to support individuals whom have been prescribed and are taking warfarin and raise awareness around the Australian Digital Health Agency's technologies, including My Health Record and My Health App, which the agency will go into shortly. A specific key messages document um, as the blog, um, has been developed, as well as a blog to empower you with the knowledge around the end of the seven day delay on the accessibility of INR results. So if you or a loved one are taking Warframe, head on over to the Heart Foundation website to learn more about these free digital resources. The Heart Foundation through social media helps to, pre helps to present critical information on heart health in short, easy to understand and entertaining ways. It is through these platforms that we're able to help Australians better themselves through healthy eating, exercise and positivity. You can jump onto any of these platforms and search for the Heart Foundation to get a daily digest of interesting information. So this is just a little snippet of some of the variety of social media information and resources you have free access to view right now. So why vaping is smoking 2.0, the Beating Hearts Boot Camp, INR, community surveys, is Greek yogurt healthy? You can jump online to find out more. 
The Heart Foundation is passionate about building grassroots communities to focus on the social and emotional needs of people living with heart disease. We currently have a range of peer support Facebook groups available for, for consumers to support the psychosocial and emotional needs of the community in which they thrive. They include the Heart Foundation Walking Group, the My Heart, My Life Patient Support Group, and the Supporting Young Hearts Peer Support Group. These groups focus on community and allow others to share stories with their peers, enabling personal connections. If you head on over to Facebook on your preferred app, you will search either Heart Foundation Walking, My Heart, My Life, My Heart, My Life Community, or Heart Foundation HF Supporting Young Hearts. The Heart Foundation Walking Group is for anyone who is interested in being a part of the walking community. My Heart, My Life is a peer support platform for individuals who have suffered a cardiac event and supporting young hearts is for individuals, individuals usually aged um, under 45 years who have been affected by heart disease. If you or someone you love has recently experienced a heart attack or been told you have a heart disease or being told you have heart disease, you can sign up to the My Heart My Life support program. It's a free program to support your heart recovery journey and it's also available for your family or support people. It offers printed booklets, access to peer support via the My Heart My Life Facebook group, practical advice and support by text messages, regular emails including links to recipes and access to the most up-to-date information. So what is Heart Week? Heart Week is from the 1st to the 7th of May this week. So we're in Heart Week now. It is a National Heart Health Awareness Week held in the first week of May each year. It provides an opportunity for health professionals and the Australian public to start a conversation about heart disease and take positive steps to improve their heart health. The first is to measure your blood pressure. We know that blood pressure should be measured at least once every two years for adults over the age of 18. And we know that high blood pressure is the leading risk factor for heart disease. However, it often doesn't have any symptoms. This is why it is so important to have your blood pressure measured regularly, even if you're feeling healthy and well. You can get it measured at a pharmacy, at home using a validated machine, or by a doctor or nurse during your next doctor's appointment. The second step is to calculate your heart age using the heart age calculator. The Heart Age Calculator is simple. It's a three minute online questionnaire designed to help you understand your risk of a heart attack or stroke by determining your heart age. It uses a well-known risk factor, it uses well-known risk factors for heart disease to estimate your risk compared to a defined healthy range. If your heart age is higher than your actual age, you may be at higher risk of having a heart attack or stroke and should speak to your GP about getting a heart health check. And the third and final step is in fact, to book in for a heart health check with your GP. There's a range of resources designed and developed for you on our Heart Foundation website. So please jump onto the heartfoundation.org.au to find out more. And lastly, but not least, the Medicare subsidy supporting this check is due to expire on the 30th of June, 2023. And we are concerned the federal government will not extend this item. Removing the heart health check um, Medicare item will have a devastating impact resulting in tens of thousands of preventable heart events occurring and, debilitate, and have a debilitating effect on the health system for all Australians and their families. So please join us in the fight for Australian hearts and help save the Medicare Heart Health Check. You can do this by visiting the Heart Foundation webpage or share or, and, and searching, sorry, save heart checks or by visiting our National Heart Week campaign page, as stated previously on the heartfoundation.org.au. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rebecca. That was a very interesting presentation and I think I've been inspired to go and book in for my heart health check. Um, lots of really useful resources and I should point out that you will receive a copy of the slides following the session um, in an email for everyone who registered for this session will get a copy of the slides and we are also doing a video recording so you can watch it back later if you need to. So don't feel like you need to jot everything down. So I would now like to say thanks again to Rebecca and hand over to Tunde who's going to take us through my health record and some of the heart health information that can be really useful to have in your record so that if you 
have an uh, issue with your heart, you can find that information quickly and easily, as can your healthcare providers. Tunda, over to you. Thanks, Cathy. So what is my health record? My health record is an online summary of your key health information and it can contain information about your immunizations and your vaccinations, your pathology and diagnostic imaging reports uploaded by your healthcare providers, prescription and dispense records, hospital discharge summaries, and much more all in one place. You can also add your health information, such as your personal health summaries and advanced care planning information. Currently, there are over 906 million documents in the system that have been uploaded by healthcare providers and also by consumers. My health record is personally controlled, which means you can control who accesses your record, what gets uploaded, and also what document stays in your record through your record's privacy and access settings. My health record is a national system which makes your health information available to you, your healthcare providers, and any representatives you may have wherever and whenever it's needed, especially in an emergency. It's, it's accessible at all times. My health record has also many features to protect your health information. Some of the safeguards that are in place to protect the information held in the system include strong encryption, firewalls, secure login processes, and also audit logging. The system is also supported by legislation that controls who can access the system and the information in it. There are serious penalties for misuse, so your rights are protected by law. A very common question is, do I have a My Health record? Well, in 2019, everyone in Australia was automatically given a My Health record unless they opted out. New arrivals to Australia may also have selected to have a record. If you do not have a Medicare card or a Dep Department of Veterans Affairs, you may still be eligible to apply. Currently, there are more than 23.5 million total My Health records and almost 98% have data in them. So you might be wondering how My Health record can benefit you. Well, there are several ways that My Health record can benefit heart health. Firstly, if you have trouble remembering your medicines or your medical history, your record may provide valuable information uh, to inform your care. It can reduce the risk of medication errors by providing your healthcare providers with information about your medicines. And this can help to prevent dangerous drug interactions and ensure that you receive the right medicines at the right dose. My health record can help you keep track of your test and scan results as well. When your healthcare providers can view these, it reduces the need for repeat tests and procedures. For patients with a heart condition, access to their information can be critical. My health record can provide healthcare providers with timely access to important health information, which can help with the diagnosis and treatment of heart-related emergencies. Then if you require care from a different healthcare provider, such as a GP, cardiologist or pharmacist, my health record can help in the coordination of your care. By having access to your medical history, your diagnosis or your treatment plan, your team of healthcare providers can work together to provide more effective care. You and any representatives you may have can also add information to your record, your allergies, your adverse reactions, medicines that you're taking, such as supplements, advanced care planning documents, and emergency contacts as well. This may be critical health information to your healthcare providers. My health record can play an important role in the management of heart health by giving you and your healthcare providers access to health information over time. This type of detailed information helps your doctors to make more informed decisions about your treatment and the medicines that they prescribe. So I'm going to play you a short video now to share a real life example of how my health record can be beneficial for people with heart health or a heart condition. So this is Sue Leyland. Um, she had a heart attack on Boxing Day and this is her healthcare journey. 
one moment while I get the video to work. I'm Susan Leyland. I'm a local business owner here in Emerald. I've lived here for the last three years with my husband. We came up here and purchased a couple of local restaurants after his so-called retirement. She's a jovial person. She loves life. She's always looking for the next adventure. We try to get on the road with the caravan as much as possible, which is uh, with our involvement with the business is a little bit hard at times, but we just enjoy the adventures, different places, different things that are out there. We revel in it. Well, it was Christmas Day. We had a very, very busy day at the restaurant. At four o'clock the following morning on Boxing Day, I woke up with immense pain in my chest. Could barely move, could barely breathe. Dave was incredibly stressed and he just said, that's it, I'm taking you off to the hospital. I felt scared, scared for the situation, scared for Sue. I've never experienced anything like that in my life before. A lot of our job in an emergency setting, acutely, is trying to figure out what's wrong with the patient. That can be a challenge. And as much information as we can possibly have quickly available at our fingertips is really, really helpful um, when we're making that assessment and doing that investigation. Having some digital records, especially from the general practice setting, that allows us to look at some of the patient's usual medicines, usual sort of medical problems, certainly can make our job investigating a lot easier. Sue's situation was in fact a heart attack and after initial stabilisation and management, our management plan was to transfer her to a cardiac hospital in Brisbane. By lunchtime, I was out at Emerald Airport being loaded onto the Royal Flying Doctors plane and I was flown straight to Brisbane. I was blown away by the um, um, speed that it all happened. And we were in uh, constant communication while she was down there. All the test results came back and very positive. You know, I was greatly relieved and when we did meet up again at, um, at Emerald, it was just a, a lovely feeling to know that I had her back. You hear stories about country towns that, you know, oh, somebody gets sick in the middle of the night, they've got to call in a doctor. Well, I didn't have that experience. Everything that I needed was there. I didn't need anything else. Nothing seemed to be a problem. With my health record, the continuity of care for Susan was really good. There was no sort of handover period like even giving history of what had been going through. My health record just followed her on the path. Having my medical records in one place means I don't have to carry them with us in the caravan or wherever we plan to be in the future. It gives me confidence to know that I'll get looked after. Doesn't matter where in Australia we end up, if there's any issues, my health records are there. Having my records in one place gives me peace of mind and more importantly, freedom. Okay, so how do healthcare providers and consumers utilize my health record? Well, healthcare providers use conformance software and uh, they can also use the national provider portal to view information in your My Health record. Uh, they can upload via conformance software. Consumers, on the other hand, can log in to My Health, which is a new app that was released by the agency recently. They can also use the Health Direct app or the Health Now app. And the other option is to log into My Health record through your MyGov via a web browser. You can add information to your My Health record if you log in through MyGov. Just a little bit more about the My Health app. So the My Health app is an application which was developed by the Australian Digital Health Agency. Uh, Rebecca mentioned it earlier. It can be used to access key health information in My Health record on your mobile. It's a free application and it can be installed. Uh, you can use it to view your information, such as immunisation, 
medications, your medicines and your test results. So you can see on the slide the home screen there and it displays several tiles that let you easily navigate your health information in My Health Record. I'd like to download the My Health app, you can search My Health Gov and download it from the App Store or Google Play. So what is in My Health Record? Well, the information in your My Health Record may come from a few different sources. Firstly, your healthcare providers may upload clinical documents which contain information about your health and care. Some of these types of documents can include your shared health summary, your hospital discharge summary, your event summary, a specialist letter, pathology or diagnostic imaging test results, and immunisation information. In fact, pathology test results are the most commonly viewed documents. As soon as blood clot the blood clot monitoring test, which Rebecca mentioned, the INR test, is uploaded by a pathology lab, we can access these in My Health Record, which is very helpful. And I'll also talk some more about the INR test results later in the webinar. Secondly, other information available in your record may come from the Medicare Benefits Schedule, uh, Department of Veteran Affairs, um, Pharmaceutical Benefits Scheme and Repatriation Pharmaceutical Benefits Scheme claims, the Australian Organ Donor Register or the Australian Immunisation Register records. You can choose what information flows into your record from these sources. Um, if you have a look in your records profile, um, settings tab, you'll be able to see what you've set up there. And lastly, you can add information to your record. So um, you can also, if you're a carer, you might be an authorised or a nominated representative, you may also be able to add information to the record of the person you care for. Examples of this type of information include a personal health summary, personal health notes, uh, advanced care planning information, emergency contacts, and also childhood development information. But for now, I'm going to focus on finding your pathology test results in My Health Record. So as I mentioned a moment ago, pathology reports are the most commonly viewed document in My Health Record. So if your doctor gives you a pathology request form, you can take this form to any pathology service that uploads to My Health Record, usually. You don't have to go to the same organisation listed on the form. It's also a good idea to ask your chosen pathology provider, provider um, before you get your test done, if they are uploading to My Health Record. So you might be able to look on their website. Um, there's a hyperlink on the screen that you can see here. And when you receive a copy of these slides after the webinar, you'll be able to click on that link and it will take you to a web page that shows you which pathology providers are uploading. Um, some pathology labs are use e-requesting. So if you receive a pathology request from, from your doctor with a barcode on it, um, such as this one, you'll have to take it to the organisation listed on the form. So the barcode means that the request can be processed electronically. And when you arrive at the pathology organisation shown on the form, they'll scan the barcode and you'll get your test done. And when your results are processed, they'll automatically be shared with the healthcare provider that requested them. And you can decide whether you'd like this pathology report uploaded to My Health Record by um, speaking with your healthcare provider. And you can elect, do not send to My Health Record you can see that circled on the form. But if you are very keen to have your pathology report uploaded, it's good to share that as well. So your pathology reports show important information about recent pathology tests, such as your blood tests, urine tests or biopsy test results, COVID-19 tests, um, healthcare provider details, and details about the pathology organisation. When you have your pathology um, reports available in your My Health Record, you can check the tests that you've had and when you had them, follow your tests over time and share the tests with your healthcare provider. You can do this via the My Health app, which is very convenient. Um, and this may help to reduce unnecessary tests. 
So to find your pathology reports in My Health Record, start on the record home page and you can see the documents tab at the top. Click on that and you'll be able to select clinical records from the drop down menu there. Next, you can click on pathology reports in the center of the screen there. Here you can see that there is a pathology report available for the blood clot monitoring test, uh, the INR test. And what you can then do is just click on that gray box. It is available to view and open up your report. You'll be able to see the information in it. Some reports um, are available straight away, but most pathology reports are available to access seven days after they're uploaded. Um, and this allows time for your healthcare provider to review and discuss the results with you. You'll be able to see the report in your record there. Um, it's got a little lock that you can see in the second one there, but you won't be able to open the document until this little lock disappears. So for that seven day period, you'll have to wait before you can open that for most tests. However, you can open some reports as soon as they're uploaded. So the reports for blood clot monitoring, the INR test, you can open that as soon as it's uploaded. Reports for diabetes monitoring tests as well. And finally, the COVID-19 and respiratory infection tests. I'll take you through how you can find your medicines information in my health record now. So first of all, from the home screen, again, if you move across to the documents tab and from the menu, you select medicines information. And then you just click on allergies and adverse reactions and medicines information tile. If you scroll down the page past the information about allergies and adverse reactions at the top, you will find the medicines preview section on the screen here. Uh, it shows you medicines information that's been uploaded by your healthcare providers, as well as any medicines information that you or any representatives you may have has, have added as well. A little bit later in the webinar, I will explain how to add medicines information. But for now, looking at this example medicines preview we have on the screen, we can see that it displays three documents, a dispense record, a prescription record, and a discharge summary. To find other documents you may have in your record um, that might not be listed here, you can filter your documents by uh, document type, by author, and also by the date range. Some documents listed like the green discharge summary at the bottom there don't allow for a preview of the medicines information from here. If you wanted to view the medicines information in your discharge summary there, you would have to actually click on the little red hyperlink. But the documents you can preview, uh, they're all the gray ones there. You just click on the document to open it. So if you click on a gray document, this is what it could look like. It's just an example. There may be incorrect or missing information um, in your My Health record. And if this happens, uh, if it's incorrect information, please call the My Health Record helpline. It's 1800 723 471 and option one. You can contact the healthcare provider who uploaded the document, ask them to remove it, and they may upload a new one and you can also remove the document yourself. If information is missing, you need to check if your healthcare provider is uploading to My Health Record. And now moving on to adding medicines information to your My Health Record. So your personal health summary lets you do this. Uh, it lets you add information about your prescription medicines, any um, medicines that you've bought over the counter, such as the aspirin or ibuprofen, complementary medicines such as vitamins, and other health-related substances that you may be uh, taking for treatment or preventative care. 
So your information in your per personal health summary is available to your healthcare providers to view. You can provide them accurate information about your medication history and any of these complementary or traditional medicine supplements such as fish oil or St John's wort. This can help your healthcare providers avoid prescribing medications that may interact negatively with the ones that you're already taking. For people with a heart condition, condition, having a record of your medications used over time allows the healthcare providers to monitor the changes and to make adjustments to their medication, which is so important. To add information to your personal health summary, uh, start from your record home page again. We select documents and from the drop down menu, select key information I've added. And then you can click on the personal health summary tile. You can see here that there are some fields that require information. So medicine and dose information, you need to complete those. Reason for taking medication, additional comments, those are optional. And you can just type your information in there. And I've just entered some um, information as an example for you. It's just got aspirin, 100 milligrams, one tablet daily. And I've opted to state the reason for heart health. And then just click save. And then it will come up like this. You'll also uh, be able to edit the information if you think you've made a mistake or if it's no longer relevant and you'd like to remove it, you can also go ahead and do that. The My Health Record information in this webinar can also be accessed in the agency's program, Digital Health Learning for Everyone. This program gives access to e-learning modules and videos which show you how to use My Health Record. You can choose the content which interests you the most and do these at your own pace. So just um, you can use the hyperlink there at the bottom of the image or if you're using a phone or a mobile device, you can scan the QR code to access. We've also got some future um, digital health webinar sessions coming up and you might be interested in attending some of these. And again, the slides that we share with you at the end um, will include all of the registration links. You can also view past sessions that we've recorded, if you've missed any. And that's the end of um, my part. So I might hand over to Kathy and Rebecca. Do we have any questions? Thanks so much, Tonda, that was fantastic. Um, I might get you and Rebecca to both turn your cameras on and I encourage all of the attendees, if you do have any questions, to type them into the question pane now. Um, we did have one question, but that was just asking about whether people were gonna receive a recording, a copy of the recording and the slides, which we've uh, since covered, so that's all good. Um, there are some questions that we do commonly get asked um, in these sessions. So I might just run through a few of those and give people the chance if you do have a question and want to type it into the question box, please do so. Um, but one of the questions that often comes up is, will my health record include my past medical history? And really it just depends how long your record has been in existence for. So if you were in hospital a month ago and your My Health record existed then, then that discharge summary from that hospitalisation will probably be in your My Health record because the hospitals have been connected and uploading those discharge summaries for some time. But if you were in hospital 10 years ago, it probably won't be in your My Health record or depends when your My Health record was started. So it doesn't go backwards, it really is only added to as you interact with the healthcare system since your record was created. The only other bit of retrospective information that can come in is some of the information that flows through from Medicare. So it can have some of the past history in that regard. Um, you can go back and look at that history in your record. Um, and of course, with the immunisation register, that is the full immunisation register. So um, going back, I think in 
2016, it was expanded to include uh, adults. It was originally the immunisation register for children, um, but that goes all the way back to when it started being shared for adults. If you, as Tunde mentioned, go into your My Health record or use the app and have a look and you can't see some of that information in there, um, just check the settings because it may be that when you set up your record or when it was set up for you that there may have been a tick box that said don't include my Medicare information and some people I think erred on the side of caution and said I don't want that to be in there and actually it's really useful to have it there. Um, so if you just decide you want to have it in there um, you can go th through in the profile settings that uh, Tunde showed on the screen before and change those settings for Medicare and make sure that information is in there and if you change that and select yes I want my uh, immunization information for instance then you will see the full list of your um, immunization register history available through your app or through your my health record as, when you log in that way. Um, and I might the other way just to say that um, if you're wondering how to change your Medicare information settings and you'd like a little bit of help, you can always have a look at the agency's website, but you can also access some really useful um, how-to videos and information via the digital health learning for everyone that I shared before. So um, that slide with the QR code and the, and the link, um, you can always access via that. Thanks, Tonda. The other thing to mention in terms of that past history information is going to your GP and if they haven't done so already, asking them to upload what's called the shared health summary. So that's a snapshot of the information that they've got stored in their local system, but it's not absolutely everything but it's some key bits of information that can be really useful, uh, especially if you do get rushed to hospital in an emergency. Um, and that can include your past medical history. So it doesn't pull out all of their notes um, from the GP software, but it does include things like your current medications, allergies and adverse reactions, the past medical history, current conditions, and the immunizations that you've had at that particular practice. So if you don't, haven't had that uploaded, when you have your heart health check, ask your doctor to update their local records and then click the upload a shared health summary button um, to make sure that that information is available wherever you go in the healthcare system. So I'll just check the question box and see if there's any other questions. Uh, coming through, I can't see any. As I said, please feel free to type them in. Another common question that we get asked relates to the pathology reports going into my health record. Uh, Tunde, I think I might throw this one to you. This is a question that I think a lot of consumers uh, wonder about because they want to see their test results and sometimes they might log into their record and see that the results aren't there. Can you explain yes. why that might happen? Yes, if if this happens to you, you go into your My Health record and you're expecting a pathology test to be there, the first thing to check is whether you had um, discussed with your healthcare provider that you'd like your test uploaded. So there is a box on the form that says do not send to My Health record and if that's ticked, then your pathology report won't be uploaded. Um, secondly, you need to make sure that you go to a pathology organisation that's uploading to My Health Record and you can call ahead or check on, on the website that I shared earlier and um, go and have your blood test done. And then you may not be able to view it for seven days. Um, so it might be sitting there, but you might not be able to open it. If it's got that little lock icon on it, you just need to keep waiting for the seven days before you can view it. Thanks, Tunda, that's great. I think the other thing just to point out about those pathology reports as well, um, really useful for other healthcare providers to be able to see those so that they don't have to repeat those tests. Um, and also that they are, once they are uploaded by the pathology lab, they're immediately visible to any healthcare providers who have the reason to look at your My Health record and that's only people who are directly involved in providing healthcare to you. So they can't just uh, be a healthcare professional wherever and, and, and jump into your My Health record, they'd actually have to be providing care to you. Um, but if they are doing that, then 
they can see that information straight away. Um, they don't have that seven day delay or lock over your pathology reports. Um, so really useful to keep that in mind. And if you are keen to have those reports uploaded, make sure you go to a lab that is connected. And we are working with lots of the different lab services. The agency is liaising and working closely, encouraging other pathology labs to get connected. So you find that more and more over time are connected and able to upload your results, which is good news for everybody. So I'll just take a moment to check the question box again. I can't see anyone coming in, uh, any questions coming in, apart from a comment from someone saying, loving the presentation so far, thank you so much. Um, they needed to drop off, but they're, they're gonna watch the recording. So that's good news. So we might wrap up there. Thank you everyone for joining us and hope you uh, take good care of your heart and your heart health. And uh, if you do have any questions or need further information, please feel free to contact either the Heart Foundation or look at the Heart Foundation's website, which um, will come out with the slides, or visit the Digital Health Agency's website for more information about My Health Record and find out how it can support better health care for you. Thank you, Rebecca and Tunda, for your presentations and have a good rest of the day, everybody. Thanks so much. Thanks, everyone. See you next time. Bye.